Hey guys, welcome to a tutorial video which is gonna change your life. That's it. I have made the statement of the century because it is true. If you are a Java developer, there's gonna be a time in your lifetime when you are gonna say that, hey, I need to work in Eclipse because Eclipse is the standard IDE for Java these days. Everybody is working in it and no matter where you go, even IBM has their own Bebspear, which is just an extension of Eclipse. So, as I said, it's gonna change your life because you need to know Eclipse. So let's get started with looking at what Eclipse is all about. Now when I started out Eclipse was this big monster uh, used for Java development and everybody was scared of it because it looks complicated and I tell you what it is complicated. It's not very easy it has a high learning curve but once you get it once you understand the intricacies of Java and the intricacies of Eclipse you're gonna love it. And I love this environment because it's one of the best environments, best IDEs that I've worked with. And the main reason for that is it's open source. So that means it's free to use, unlike other IDEs. Huh, shouldn't name them, but hey, they're out there. Okay, so let's get the very basics of Eclipse right from the beginning. So all you need to do is go to eclipse.org and download the latest version of Eclipse uh, and I think it will be Juno if you are in 2013 I don't know what will be the next release next big release but it's Juno till date okay so once you have done your you know downloading this is what you're gonna see once Eclipse begins or Eclipse is started now looking at the screen you can't make the head of head or tails of it I mean what the hell are you supposed to do so I'm just gonna be presenting a very basic overview of what Eclipse environment is all about and I'll be just showing you how to get on with your first very first project you know because it's not as easy as certain other you know IDEs okay so once your basic Eclipse is set up the number one thing that you need to know are actually three things the number one thing is the project explorer the project explorer is nothing but like your windows explorer it just shows your projects in a hierarchy right now i don't have any projects and the servers that you see over here is by default and it's empty so i'll be just getting back to it in just one minute but the project explorer can show you all your projects in a very familiar windows hierarchy sort of style and it you know it displays it so it has that ability where you can link the web page that you're developing or any page that you're developing with your project and so on and so forth so it has certain properties of its own and it is interesting on its own so let's have a look at the second thing that you need to know the second thing is this particular panel over here uh, you see plenty of stuff here markers properties servers data source ex data source explorer sorry snippets and console two things over here are of vital importance number one is servers as you can see we have no servers right now installed that is why this server folder is also empty and the number two thing in this is the console. The console is going to be your friend because the console is going to give you vital information about the server that is running and the applications that are running on that particular server. So you can have a lot of information that is being dished out on the console which shows you the status and certain vital information about your applications and your servers. So that's two things that we have spoken about. The number three thing is right now empty this this big panel over here this big panel is gonna show you uh, the actual workspace the actual page that you're gonna code and uh, it's gonna be your coding page so these are the three things that you need to know off the uh, very start or very beginning of your Eclipse development uh, you know journey okay so the number one thing that you do once your Eclipse is installed is because uh, you're gonna be working with a lot of web applications for Java that is enterprise applications or you know a big dynamic web project uh, the number one thing that you should do after installing Eclipse is come over here in the servers tab in this particular panel and just click on new server visit now you'll get a lot of options over here which will be really confusing if you're an absolute beginner but the number one thing that you need to know over here is that these are just providers of servers which run on Eclipse so 
Apache is like the most famous one. You must have heard this name if you're a Java developer. I am sure that you have heard about Apache. Apache will provide you the server environment while Tomcat is the actual server. So as you'll see there are a lot of versions over here of Tomcat. Obviously you go for the largest one and the next thing that you need to know is the basic. Basic will provide you with a enterprise edition preview server which is not really an actual I would say server that will just provide you with a preview of stuff IBM has its own obviously WebSphere as I've said before and they also have their own environment for WebSphere known as RAD which is not so RAD actually uh, then you have JBoss JBoss is also getting quite popular these days but people still prefer uh, Apache over JBoss that's what I've seen you have object web and obviously oracle with its own standalone server but you don't need to bother about these servers because the number one server that you need to know about is apache so just click on apache tomcat version 7.0 server now the th two things that you need to know um, once you click on next if you don't have apache tomcat installed pre-installed it will give you a prompt that Apache Tomcat is not installed it cannot find its environment and all you need to do is just click on download and install you'll get an option just download it and install it that's it finish now after doing that you'll be returned to this screen this screen shows you the projects that are available and you can configure them or add it to this particular server that you're going to be creating so just click on finish because we don't have any projects that are right now up and running for us so as you'll see the server tab was empty and now it has Apache Tomcat version 7.0 at localhost and now I'll just tell you one thing you can create multiple instances of multiple servers and all of them will be running on this particular tab over here in the servers tab and all the information regarding all your servers will be available on the console now there's one important thing that you need to remember Apache Tomcat runs like any local host on 8080 so if you're creating multiple instances on the local host you need to change the port number uh, from 80 to say 81, 82, whatever you know but that is a little advanced right now we just need one server because we're gonna be running all our projects on this particular Apache Tomcat version 7.0 sorry server okay so now you have set up your server it stopped and there's nothing in the console because your server is not running up and running so what you need to do is now you will be creating a dummy project so all you need to do is right click on the project explorer or you can just go to project and you cannot go to projects I'm sorry you can go to new and file new and you can go to project now you get a lot of options over here but the most basic of options obviously is going to be in the web dynamic web project everybody 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 I think 99% of the people are working on dynamic web projects obviously there are a lot of project options that you get with the modern day Eclipse but dynamic web project is the most uh, you know most used I would say just click on next now you'll get a project name so I'll just put it as test test underscore YouTube why not so we have a project called test underscore YouTube uh, location will be your workspace that you need to select uh, by default or you can have your own specified workspace now as you can see you have your Apache Tomcat and j 2 e preview and even if you want to create a new environment just click on new runtime just go to I don't know IBM WebSphere and just select next and you'll be entering into that runtime environment okay so the next thing that you need to do is go to dynamic web module version always select the highest one because obviously higher is better and you'll be seeing here the options that you'll be having as to what your configuration needs to be for that particular project and I always go with Apache default configuration because um, at mid-level projects you don't need to configure the server environment for the particular project it's it's when you need to go into really big projects and you need your own kind of uh, customized uh, you know environment or configurations if you are developing a JSF project then you can go with Java server faces version 2.1 and 
obviously you have your minimal configuration so we'll go with default configuration for Apache Tomcat version 7.0 click on next and you will see you have your source folder I'll be talking about this in the new video what all this is all about just click on next and click on finish and as you'll see your test YouTube is ready over here this is your entire project and obviously I think this demands a new video regarding how you know how your project is built what is the project uh, build structure what is all this what is all these folders and how do you create you know web pages in it and so on and so forth so you have your project you have your server ready and you're good to go so the options to run this project are plentiful but I guess that's in a new video would be more appropriate so this was a basic overview of what the Eclipse environment is all about and in the next video we'll be talking about how to create your very own project and then will be showing you how to create some pages in it and database connectivity so thank you for watching if you did like my videos please leave a comment likes share your, this video with your friends and obviously you can obviously subscribe to my channel which is why this tutorial now where we'll be posting many more tutorials videos which will be helping you become becoming a better programmer maybe just like me so thank you for watching and have a great time